Bonsoir, la son. Oh, now my French is gone. <laughs> it's so good to be here. I'm really happy to, to, yeah, to be here with you all today. You all have the power to change the world. We all. And you can do it through an idea. We designers have ideas every day shaped into solutions. We keep iterating to the most mundane problems, to the most exciting issues. And yet, we are in a fast-paced world. Things are changing from one day to another. How, how many apps do you use in your phone? How many things do you think that you use today that you be relevant tomorrow? How many of the things that you use that don't exist anymore? May I ask, how many apps, really, do you have in your phone? <laughs> how many websites do you visit daily? Do you still use Twitter? <laughs> Facebook? Facebook? Instagram? Clubhouse? Oh my God, we are all, all crazy about having an uh, invitation to go to Clubhouse, right? And I don't know, I didn't, I didn't install, I did install, uninstall it from my phone. How many apps have you tried and 10 minutes later you saw that it didn't work and you removed from your phone, right? Or didn't do the thing you wanted it to do? Great solutions so sometimes are adopted, are rejected, and sometimes the most average ideas get embraced. More than ever, companies are looking for people that can help them iterate fast their products, deliver it to the market, and reduce costs. And if you can do that today, you always be in demand. And how can you do this today with no code? Imagine you being able to get real user feedback, not just doing tests like uh, with uh, five users anymore, but really putting your ID out there and getting real feedback from people that are using the product. Wouldn't that be a dream? That has been the, my dream for the last couple of years. So I am Carla Fernandes. I am from Brazil. I live in Switzerland for, yeah, I would like to say 10 years, but for 10 years I have been trying to be here, but now I am. So I live in Switzerland now and I have traveled around the world, like lived in 11 countries and just doing design remote like for 15 years. I worked with design for 25 and yeah, I'm a generalist and no code really got into me when I realized that this can be the next thing, can be really the thing that you turn you more than ever the next level designer, the one that can help companies really do what they want to do. It's that it's putting out there uh, an idea a solution, solve a problem. That's what we do every day, right? So I have been doing websites, I have been doing apps, I have been doing a bunch of things, but lately I, I even focused a little bit more in the app world. I work as a mentor and uh, yeah, it's the be best time than ever also to join us, right? Like everyone wants to be a UX designer, everyone, thinks that the design um, right now it's valuable and come on I saw 25 years of it and it took so long for them to really imagine that design could change things and that we could build solutions for real problems and now we can all do that. What's no code? So no code it's um, collaborative or you can say it's a tool that allow you for to do or to build things or without writing one single line of code. It's a movement. In short, it is an alternative to traditional development and for non-technical people. 
yes, we can have those skills too. We can understand technical things, we can improve uh, the things that exist, but this is done for non-technical people. So what's possible to build with no code? You can build landing pages, you can build websites, you can build native apps, web apps, you can build service as softwares, software, dashboards. Who here uses no code daily? Nobody? Like uh, any tool that allow you to build something without coding. Yeah? Who uses Figma daily here? Okay. So, Figma is a no-code collaborative design tool for interface prototypes. So you all use no-code. It's time to allow curiosity to create space for other skills to grow. So we need more designers that are generalists, people that can build things, not just design and develop and, and test with five users and give it to developers and, and later on see what's happening. As a designer, we already wear many hats. We do many parts of the solution. We do the research. We come with the interactions, we iterate the products, we get feedback. So why not deliver? You will, you, again, be always in demand. And we need, oh, so I think I got back, right? And I am a generalist. Uh, once I was, I heard that actually because, right? I am doing a little bit of a, uh, HTML, CSS, I understand, I speak with developers, I can yeah, deliver a whole website. Then I was said, I was told that I was a master of known. Okay, so you are a designer, but yeah, check off all trades. But I prefer to think that I'm a unicorn. A unicorn for those companies that don't have the budget, that have really good ideas, but don't have the money to get 10 people, two pe even two people to do one app for Android and one for iOS, right? And you can all join me <laughs> and be unicorns. Isn't that good? So we can help startups validate their ideas. We already, we can design, right? We already do it. We prototype, we test. So we should start delivering and now we can with no code. Why did I start with no code? So 10 years ago, I had an idea. Like I have many ideas all the time, but like I had an idea, I was living still in Brazil and uh, even though there the weather is, yes, hot or more than here a little bit, right? I was really into scarves. But it was so hard, like I see you are wearing a scarf there. It was so hard to learn how to not the thing and also to be different, you know? And then I searched this whole content online and I saw that there were no app on the app store that was good enough for me to download and see something. Then I realized, okay, this is an idea, it's a cool. So I got a friend that was uh, doing illustrations and I said to her like, oh, can you do this step by step of uh, this and then I, kind of got 15 types of knots and she draw all the steps like one by one. And then I thought, okay, this is so amazing. So now I you, I you build it. Then I start to learn TypeScript. That was very long ago, so 10 years ago. The first or second version of iOS, I tell you, you don't want to go there. So it was so hard for me to learn everything that once I got my, a little bit of my first prototype ready, oh, Apple just launched a new version. <laughs> and everything was gone. And I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't learn fast enough. And then I got really frustrated and I put all those beautiful illustrations that I have ready on a folder. 
and I kept looking at it through the years, realizing like, oh, one day maybe I can pay some developers to build it, right? Like, because this, at least, development got a little bit cheaper with the time, right? But still was not cheap enough for me. So I thought, okay, investing too much money to build this. And I didn't do. And uh, what happened was that in 2020, in December, like uh, most of December, so we have a December right here, I get the whole month to learn something new. I try to call it my month where that's like a learn something new. So I saw in June that there were this new tool that would connect with Figma and create uh, magical things for my phone and it seemed so easy and I thought, okay, I should give it a try. But they had a, con a competition going on about a plant app and they had the, like a, it was a very cool idea for you to learn how to take care of your plants. The plants here are beautiful, by the way, like uh, most of mine are dying all the time. So I thought it was such a great idea to help people to take care of plants, but I didn't have the time to invest on learning how to build that at the time. Then in December in 2020, they did have um, a campaign really focused on designers and they were reaching designers because they saw that we were already creating, designing, and prototyping, and trying that out with users, but not really on their phone, right? We, today, Figma really allow us to create prototypes so easily, and we just can't test those. We can test those on web, we can test those on mobile phones, and so on, send links to, to our customers, or use, I don't know, user testing, or things like that. So what happened with it was that with this campaign i realized you know what this will be my christmas gift and i tell this as christmas gift because it was a free subscription but i wanted to make a plan that would allow me to publish my app because i really wanted to build it so i gave myself the time and i spent the whole month learning about it so today there are 284 no-code tools that I know of because I am trying to catalog, catalog them. For sure there are much more, but those are seem interesting and, and some of them I have used maybe about, yeah, 100 or so. If you don't know much about no-code, there is a movement called 100 Days of No-Code that allow you to learn about one tool every day. And it's really interesting because they give you a little bit of thing, they tell you what you do, and then you learn and you just grow with this, these skills. Those here are some of those tools. You have tools for design and content, you have things for spreadsheets like uh, that work with data, right? You have chatbots, you have um, many tools combined, you have uh, automations like Zapier, I don't know if you ever use something like that, maybe getting to, through a Google form and then doing this and doing that. So it's a very cool idea too. What I use mainly? I use today Bravo, Bravo Studio. I use Airtable as my database. It's like a spreadsheet, I think they would be upset with me to, me to hear me saying that. But I just want to say that it's so easy to use, that it's just drag and drop, you can put data there, you can put videos, you can put files, you can create kind of fields that are different, like for dates, you can create uh, conditions, like you do in a, in a spreadsheet. And I use our lovely tool, Figma. And if you use Adobe XD still, I hope Figma prevails. So, <laughs> and Bravo. Bravo makes the mix of the two. Bravo gets the whole Figma design that you have uh, considered the way you want, which makes it the magic for me because as a designer like you, of course I care about the looks, right? It's not just, of course, the experience the most important, but the looks, oh my God, it's the second one. So when you see there are several several of those two today that really give you the power to create native apps like Bravo do. But most, I would say none of them give you the design part. And that was what 
what Bravo gave me that I decided to go with it. So what should you use? You can use so many things depending on the problem that you are trying to solve. There are, like I said, so many tools, but for sure, many of you have heard of Webflow, WordPress, Squarespace, Wix, all of those are no code tools. So how was my journey? I put this graph here about the learning curve and it's really interesting because the next slide I you talk about a little bit about what I did. And I think it's really nice when you start in this new world to have those ideas that probably I would say that, okay, instead of me thinking, how many of you wanted to do an idea? Like, it doesn't need to be today or tomorrow, but how many of you have an idea that you thought, okay, you know what, I should do this? Right? I think that's just natural for designers. We are all the time seeing the problems or seeing things that don't work that we could do better, right? And that, it, it's a bit of it. So when you have that problem that you want to solve, of course, it will be a little bit difficult on the start. And you have to go with babe steps and uh, grow with it, but it's definitely possible. So why not give it a try? Here, you can see that uh, with uh, Bravo, I already spent 455 hours doing projects. It's not a lot, but I launched 15 apps. And I have today 2,532 apps running on users' devices, which for me, it's a gift, right? Uh, you can see here that my first app that I was talking about, Scarf app, uh, it took me 77 hours to build. And it was so simple concept behind it, but still I was learning it. And I said like, well, what can I do? But the second one that was seller count, oh wow, 26 hours. That really got a little bit faster. And it was so different, right? Like a Scarf app has a lot of images. I was just dealing with sliders, with navigation, with a search, and I was integrating this with the database again, with uh, a table. So the design was made completely on Figma, and then I was putting those images on the database, and then I was binding them with, uh, with um, Bravo through an API. So Seller Cloud, has videos and has audio. So it was very cool. So I, now I have a play for audio and I have a play for videos and I can put also the search, I can put a, a buy button. Okay, don't do buy buttons on App Store. They don't allow you to sell if you are not selling app purchases because they want a cut. But in Google, they allow you to do that. But I learned another thing too. Go Android users don't like to pay for the apps. So I realized that my public is not there, right? I want to do solutions, but I also don't want just to be doing all everything for free. So then you have creative links. It was not so much different from Seller Couch, but it was totally different project. It's um, John creates a list of uh, design links every week, which he publishes. And if you are part of the community team Figma or design system or Figma tokens, for sure you have seen his link somewhere. Like uh, he is presenting all of these communities. He works for Apple and we did his app. It's a little bit like a blog. So he has there like uh, an archive for all the weeks that were passed. He has the current week in in being featured, you can search throughout the links, you can visit it inside the app and launch a browser inside the app instead of going somewhere else. And you can share that with your friends. So it was totally different project too. And in, on each product, I was adding a little bit more knowledge about the two and using different functionalities, which of course gave me experience and also a title of a Bravo expert with the time. So now I have one for you. Like, I don't know if you recognize this little icon there. It was the one for our event. I have an app that's called UI UX events, 
which me and anybody can contribute with links of um, events that are interesting for the community of designers, that people that are learning and so on. So you can go there, you can recommend your own or event, you can put the link and then I you check it out and then I you publish. So all of this is kind of automated today through uh, our table. And then you have a hundred animals, which I loved to do. Imagine you playing with kids now. So I start to play with kids in different languages. I have two step kids. They are a little bit older right now. They are seven and nine and they speak Portuguese, English, German, and Italian. So I did this, this app in six languages. They, there is Chinese and there is um, Spanish that they don't speak that as well. There is no version for French. If you'll tell me that uh, there is a, a need, let me know. <laughs> so the first app, it probably took me more than 11 hours, but on average from the six, this is 11 hours by each. And today, if I want to add French, for example, it is as easy as maybe four hours work. And I can create a new product with the same concept. I could start like a, a hundred things. I could start uh, with um, help other people learning languages with other things uh, like uh, related to work. And it's so interesting that your ideas start to not collaborate, but you could grow other ideas from the ones that you had before that use the same kind of concept. Then there is no code class and you say like, okay, you were really putting things down and then suddenly, you're, ooh, right? So this is a course. I created a course to help other people to start with Bravo because I realized that in the community, a lot of people were having the same troubles I had with Scarf app that were easy to understand if they would have a video, if they would watch how to do it step by step. So I created a course and these eight hours include me recording the course, editing the videos, creating the thumbnails and all of it together with the app. So if you think of creating a course in 80 hours, I tell you, that was a crush. <laughs> it's really hard to beat. And now I'm sure I didn't take 45 minutes, but I really want to know what are you going to build now?